fellow Vincentians, on the morning of January the 12th, 2015, a terrible tragedy occurred at Rock Gutter, located almost halfway between the rural villages of Fancy and Oya, on the northeast of St. Vincent. A minibus carrying 21 persons, 18 of whom were students on their way to secondary schools at Georgetown, North Union, and Kingstown, careened off the road and went over a precipice into the raging sea. The other persons aboard the minibus were the driver, the lessee of the minibus, who doubled up as his conductor, and the nurse. Everyone on the vehicle boarded it at fancy. This tragedy has claimed the lives of five teenage students. Two other of their colleagues are still missing at sea. The 14 who survived the accident were immediately hospitalized. Since then, seven of them thus far have been discharged from the hospital. Those who have survived, the entire village of Fancy, especially all the grieving families, the students and staff at the Georgetown Secondary School, the North Union Secondary School, and the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Grammar School, and the nation as a whole at home and abroad are pained and anguished. Everywhere in our country, the faces of men, women, and students are strained and anxious, devastated at our loss, yet thankful to Almighty God for his mercies. We look to him as the bountiful source of grace in whom faith, hope, and love abundantly and inexhaustibly reside. We are before our God, imploring him to accord us his healing hand to strengthen us, to bind us together with cords that cannot be broken, and to redeem us with his saving grace. We do not and cannot understand everything that our Lord divines, but we know by reason and faith that he loves us all, and he will see us through this excruciatingly painful night into light. Of this we are absolutely sure, and it is with this which provides us the solace and strength required for our healing and our recovery. Solemnly we recall first the names of the students who are dead and those who are missing. Their names must be forever etched in our collective memory as fitting memorials which no grave nor time can ever extinguish. Our young ones who are dead are Jamali Edwards and his brother Jamal of the North Union Secondary School, Raquel Ashton of the Georgetown Secondary School, Glenroy Michael of the St. Vincent Grammar School, and Anik Alexander of the North Union Secondary School. Our beloved who are missing are Chanstasia Stay of the North Union Secondary School, Simonique Ballantyne of the Georgetown Secondary School. We are in a special solidarity with the grieving parents of the students who are dead and missing. By name, they are Gemma Edwards and Lenroy Join and Deseran Stay, Junior Bowens and Rachel Ashton, Gloridine Hoyt John and Glenroy Michael, Methylin Alexander and Ezekiel Glasgow, Nelsia Stay and Dalton Chance, Hezron Ballantyne and Simone Ballantyne. These are the parents of those who are dead or missing. As a grateful nation, we rejoice that 14 of our fellow citizens survived this horrible tragedy. 11 of them are students and three are adults. By name, the surviving students are Unique Michael, Christy Bowens, Odysseus State, Kayana Boynes, Terrell Thomas, Israel Roberts, Ruth Ann Boynes, Orlando Lewis, Shemroy York, all of the North Union Secondary School 
and the Candian Sterling of the Georgetown Secondary School. The three adults who survived are Ehud Myers, the conductor, Ravenan Nanton, the driver, and Sherlon Hoyt, the nurse. They and their families continue to be in our prayers. Tragedies of the kind which has been visited upon us at Rock Gutter are tests of our nation's resolve and our faith. On Christmas Eve 2013, near to midnight, thunderstorms and landslides took the lives of 12 of our beloved sons and daughters and caused horrific damage and loss. With God's help in hand, we have been rebuilding and recovering. On January 12, 2015, just after morning's dawn, seven precious jewels of our present and future have been taken from us inexplicably. From this awful tragedy, there is the certainty embedded deeply in our faith and solidarity that we will be restored and be made much stronger for a better life and living. This extraordinary tragedy has brought out the best in us. From early, the exemplary communities of Fancy and neighboring Oya bonded as one to provide comfort to those in grief and suffering, selflessly and at risk to their own lives in the billowing seas. Divers volunteered as part of the search and rescue team spearheaded by the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Coast Guard. Promptly and effectively and with love, the agencies of the state responded to the disaster. The police and Coast Guard, NEMO and its volunteers, the personnel from the ministries of health, education and social development. Overwhelmingly, they have been performing their duties beyond call within tested structures and systems. Medical doctors, nurses, other medical personnel behind the scenes, ambulance drivers, counselors, teachers, members of the police and Coast Guard, and many others have been rallying commendably and with purpose. Civil society, including community activists, pastors, and journalists have risen to the occasion. Government and opposition have been at one. At the appropriate time, our state agencies will conduct a critical review of their performances to assess their strengths and weaknesses, possibilities and limitations, all with the aim of improving upon the delivery of vital public services at times of emergencies and disasters. Members of the government and opposition have in one way or another, at one level or another, been engaged in providing support and solidarity to the grieving parents, the community of fancy, and the survivors. In this engagement, I single out for special mention the outstanding efforts of the Honorable Montgomery Daniel, the parliamentary representative for North Windward, who has been exemplary in his commitment and dedication to his people. Personally, I have in practical ways, been in daily communion with the grieving families, the survivors, and the communities. I have been linking hands and hearts with them and supporting the magnificent efforts of Montgomery Daniel. The search and rescue operation for our two missing students is still continuing. We will persist in this exercise until we find them or until the professionals in consultation with the families consider otherwise. Yesterday, January the 14th, Wednesday, the post-mortem examination was carried out on the deceased students. A tentative date for the funeral has been set for Sunday, January the 25th, at the fancy hard court. Further announcements on the funeral arrangements would be made. The parents of the deceased students want a single funeral and burial ceremony. The parents have requested the services of the New Haven Funeral Home. Cabinet Secretary, acting under my instructions, have been interfacing with the families, Mrs. De Silva of New Haven, and all the other interested parties on the funeral arrangements. She will continue to do so. Parliament is due to meet on Monday, January the 12th, 
for the Governor General's thrown speech and my budget address. And that Parliament was postponed. Parliament will now meet on Wednesday, January the 28th at 4 p.m. after the funeral. The Appropriation Bill 2015 is expected to be enacted within the constitutional time frame following the usual budget debate. The estimates of 2015 have already been accorded parliamentary approval in keeping with the Constitution of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. From yesterday, Wednesday, January the 14th, the flags are being flown at half mass until further notice. A day of national mourning will soon be announced. I have been in consultations with the families on this matter. Last night at a large third night gathering at the fancy government school, the community accepted a suggestion that such a declaration ought not to be made before the two missing students are found or the search and rescue operation is called off. At that gathering in fancy last night, Wednesday, January the 14th, the site for a new cemetery in Fancy was selected. All the requisite formal and procedural arrangements are being made to give practical effect to this selection and to have the site consecrated, hopefully, prior to the funeral on Sunday, January the 25th. At the gathering last night, on behalf of the government, I made several solemn commitments to the families of all the students who are in the minibus, and to the surviving students in respect of their care, comfort, and education, right up to the university level. I will announce these measures in Parliament shortly at the appropriate time. Regarding the survivors who are still hospitalized, our government will spare no expense or effort in respect of their medical treatment in St. Vincent and the Grenadines or abroad. Our entire nation is so happy that they're alive and is so anxious, we are quite anxious, to see them restored to full health as soon as practicable. Arrangements too are being made for a replacement school bus to transport the students from Fancy. It is expected that a replacement school bus on an interim basis will be on the road from Monday, January the 19th. Our government itself is ordering for permanent operations, a new school bus, which will be managed through the Ministry of Transport. We expect to have the new school bus in the shortest possible time. Meanwhile, the counseling center, which has been established at the Seventh-day Adventist Church at Fancy, will continue its magnificent work. So too, the one set up at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. The ministries of Health, Education and Social Development are collaborating on this matter. The healing process will be a difficult and challenging one, requiring the utmost skill, care, and attention. The police have commenced and are continuing the investigations into the accident. Fellow citizens, there has been an outpouring of love and solidarity from governments, institutions, and individuals from the Caribbean and across the world. Several prime ministers of CARICOM Member States have telephoned me to express condolences and to pledge their support and solidarity. Churches across the region are conducting religious services and prayer sessions for the grieving and hurting families and lifting us all before God. I have been advised that on Sunday, January the 18th, at the church services at Westminster Cathedral in London and at the Vatican in Rome, there will be remembrances for St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the victims of the tragedy. Our West Indies T20 cricket team in South Africa offer their solidarity. We thank all our friends in the region and globally for their love and kind consideration. It means a lot to us. Above all, we know that whatever the future brings, our faith will see us through. We know that this long night of weeping will pass. It will not endure forever. Our promised joy cometh in the morning as we bond with our God and with each other enduringly. 
on behalf of the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and on my own behalf, and that of my family, I reiterate my declaration of profound condolences to the families of our deceased and missing students. Please know that we love you dearly. Your personal loss will not be in vain. Our solidarity and love go out too for the survivors and their families. As a nation, we will be with you always. I want you to know that I will be with you. You're in my heart and in my soul in my mind. I love you. We will all heal together. As we renew our faith for the difficult yet promising journey ahead, two sets of verses, uplifting words from Psalm 33, are apt in their reassurances. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord the people he chose for his inheritance. May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Thank you.